Disability is really interesting. It means something different to literally every person. Your experience with disability could even vary from somebody that has a similar disability to you. Students who might have physical disabilities, they might have learning disabilities, mental health, or ADHD. And every student is unique because the types of things that they're here to accomplish and the difficulties that they encounter along the way can be very different. My name is Justin Romack and I'm a program coordinator with Disability Resources here at Texas A&M. I was born with congenital glaucoma and it destroyed my optic nerve. I had about 90 eye surgeries for various things until I was 23. When I started losing my eyesight, I just desperately wanted to be successful. I remember having a lot of people in my world tell me that success was going to be very difficult for me. My name's Maureen Hayden. I'm a fifth year PhD candidate in the biology department at Texas A&M. I teach 20 hours a week and then I also do research 20 hours a week. I hope that my career will help make change to preserve our oceans and beaches for future generations. My retina in my right eye is detached and I only have light perception, so light and dark. And then in my left eye, my vision's pretty blurry, not correctable uh, by glasses at all. I think when the public thinks of blind, they think of totally blind, but really it's, it's anywhere from having some vision to no vision at all. My name is Christy Orr and I'm the Director of Disability Resources. So it's very important for us that we remove as many barriers as we can for students who are coming to campus who have a disability. We've been through many different models of disability over time. Biblical stories of people who are begging in the streets and the word handicap actually comes from that concept. And so we don't use the word handicap because it's from someone begging on the street with their cap in their hand. Then we got to kind of where the idea was institutionalize everyone. So whatever the disability was, sterilization was common, putting people away in an institution, hiding people away. Then we got into civil rights and disabled people in the 60s started fighting for their rights, just along with other marginalized populations. When you talk to them, you say, would you take away the disability from who you are? And they say no. I grew up learning ways to accommodate and uh, how to use assistive technology like ever since kindergarten. Growing up, I would always have my printouts on big 11 by 17 legal paper and my books would come in big 11 by 17 volumes. So like my math book would be like seven volumes or eight volumes. So I was affectionately called the pack mule in school, the braille writer, plus a magnifier, plus the braille, which is very thick cardstock and heavy. When I was in school, when I lost my, my eyesight in 2008, I had just recently bought a brand new touchscreen cell phone. I remember losing my eyesight and being really frustrated because now this, this piece of technology that I was really excited about when I could see was now totally and utterly inaccessible to me. Imagine feeling that, imagine recognizing that the barrier is not me, it's the device that's in my hands. That was really uh, frustrating. I think we're probably still a ways from really understanding disability and accepting it fully. I I'm very proud of Texas A&M and what, where we come with accessibility. Not just one office's responsibility, so our name may be Disability Resources, but we work with all kinds of different departments to make sure that whatever they're doing is accessible. So we really emphasize that everyone is responsible for accessibility. If you are blind, you need to have an auditory textbook. But being blind doesn't mean that you can't think and you can't produce work, it just is in a different manner. If we were not able to do that for students, we would be losing out on a lot of talented students who can go forward and make you know, great things happen in this world. 
It's on our computers, it's on our phones and our tablets, it's on our TVs, it's, you talk to it in your kitchen, you talk to it in your living room. This gradual transition where assistive technology is really part of our everyday lives. Now I can type Braille probably faster than you can type text on your screen because they thought outside of the box. Technology is not the barrier. It's our creativity, it's our awareness, it's our desire to create equitably that really is our biggest barrier. I learned that interacting with people and showing them my technology and that the technology I had was cool and that like they don't have to feel sorry for me. That was a cool place to be in. Like they learned that like, oh, blind people can do stuff and they can interact. I have skills that are in demand and my disability honestly has facilitated a, a, almost sort of a next level to a lot of those skills. Being able to communicate well and manage yourself in tight and tense and, and complicated conversations and situations, being able to handle yourself in pressure, being flexible. These are all skills that I've been able to refine as a professional, but they really started with being a disabled person. And so I recognize that that makes me very valuable and I like to be useful. The barriers that I encountered, the attitudes, the digital accessibility, those were things that were external to me. It had nothing to do with my ability or lack thereof. It had nothing to do with my potential or what I could contribute to the world. These were obstacles and barriers that were set up by someone else. And not intentionally, but if you're unaware of those barriers and you don't have a desire to address them, then they just continue to be obstacles.